back in Cardiff where it all began. The money's bigger, the table's shinier, and the old faces are just a little older as they do battle with the new in the return of the original and best party poker, late night poker. Ones to watch tonight include... Oh. Long-time player, first appearance on Late Night Poker. It's the Maverick from Dublin, Roy Brindley. Right. Oh, it's 2005. Former Late Night Poker champion, he'd love to make it a double. Simon Aces Trumper. Tens are no good here. And the one table yeah. specialist, Ian the Razor Fraser. To flop me three diamonds, that'll do. Tell us about your, uh, winning. Joining me in the commentary box, always one to watch. He's been playing on late night poker since the beginning. It's Barney Boatman. Hi, Vicky. Well, of course, those three old faces won't have it all their own way. They might all be experts in this format. But we've got Jen Mason there, who uh, shows an enormous amount of promise whenever she plays. Marin Holtz, who's a member of the hit squad. Very excited to see what he's going to do. And Bo Selstedt, he's quality. Yeah, we saw Bo captain the Swedish team to victory in last year's Poker Nations Cup. Look at this right out betting with the King Queen on the button. Pass. Well, that's perfectly good enough hand to do this with. I don't know, Barney. Don't you find it's getting harder and harder to steal from the button these days? I wouldn't really class that as stealing. And, of course, uh, Fraser, the man most likely to defend his line with any two cards. Oh, look at this. That's... <laughs> Yeah, this is what I mean. Ian Fraser defending with the 8-9. He thinks Bo Selstep might not have a hand, and he's flopped a straight immediately. Well, that's interesting. He's come out betting, which is a very good way to build a big pot if Selstep has hit the flop, which he has. But Selstep asking himself, why would he lead out on a raiser's flop? And he's done very well just to call here. Oh, and there's the bigger straight for the young Swede. Gotcha. Well, I mean, that's uh, Fraser knows perfectly well what an awful card that is for him. Hard for Bo Selstead to disguise his hand, isn't it? It absolutely is, and uh, Fraser's going to be hating this. He flopped a straight, he knew he was in front on the flop. <laughs> if Selstead, very hard for Selstead to bet this without the king here. What's that give you, two pair? Ian Fraser, an absolute one table specialist. He's got an amazing record in this format. My friend, you're not talking? Look at that. You think, really, it would be the youngsters who are all chirpy chatty at the table and the old guard keep quiet, but... Uh, I'll check. No, Bo Selstead won't give anything away. Check. Thanks so bad now. Well, talking is a big part of Fraser's game. Cullen, you know I've already got my hand. You can't get me off it. You can probably, most you can bet is 1,200. Fraser's tried to put Selster on the hand which which he's beating, but he knows in his heart. Lost me. <laughs> when the chips went in, he I said, Jack, I, I was not. I thought I had it all worked out, but. <laughs> now the players joining in, helping Fraser make his decision. Not sure about that. This is so sick. By checking before the, the last card came down, he more or less told, told Selster what he had, I think. He said, I've got a made hand, but it's not the nuts. Well, Fraser's found himself unable to throw the straight away on the end. He's too worried that Selstep might have two pair. And a nice pot for the Swedish captain. Of course, it may be that Ian Fraser, who hasn't played with Bo before, just mistakes him for any old online Swede. The of course, if he hadn't been such a canny, cautious player, he might have got it all in on the flop and won a much bigger pot. My kind of play is maybe not that typical Swedish. Uh, I play pretty conservative early on in tournaments. I, I am uh, very aggressive in the late stages of multi-tournaments, but I'm pretty careful early on. So in that sense, I'm, I'm not the typical Swede. The winner of this heat will go through to the final of late night poker and the runner up will go through to the semi-final. At the moment, it's Bo Selstedt, chip leader. But that guarantees nothing at this stage, Barney. No, no, all these players know how much play there is and uh, 
but of course they don't underestimate the value of an, an early chip lead. Here's Carl Marinholtz with Ace Queen. He's a new face. I think when late night poker was first made, he Pass. wasn't even old enough to be watching TV at night. Call. Just rainbow in the afternoon. Pass. Well, I, I hate this call by Brindley with Queen Jack very lightly, as it happens to be, to be dominated. Although he's actually, in a funny way, going to prefer that flop to Marinholtz, even though Marinholtz is in front. Check. They both have a pair of queens, but the up and down straight draw for Brindley up against Marinholtz, currently got the best hand with the ace kicker. Well, Marinholtz out of position is being extremely cautious. He doesn't want to go in too deep. Check. Two pair. Two pair. Yeah, well, they both check it on the end. Both of them nervous about the ten. Marinholtz wins the pot, so strike one for the new breed. Yes, and Marinholt showing that the new young hit squad of poker can play with caution as well as flair. I've been playing poker seriously for 18 months, but before that, when I, when I was working, I didn't have much time to play. I was an investment banker for three years, which I, I did straight um, from university, so that was that was pretty intense. It probably couldn't be any more opposite to how I'm doing now, where you kind of be your own boss and sort of do whatever you want. I gave up investment banking to play poker. His parents must be so pleased, Barney. <laughs> But it's working out rather well for Carl Marinholtz. He's had some very good results on the international circuit. Yeah, some good uh, results in the World Series as well as around the UK. But look at this, Ian Fraser, who's had so many results in this televised one-table format. Has he got them from raising in first position with 3-4, Barney? Yes, Vicky, there's only one Swede at this table and it's not Bo Selstead. <laughs> What's Bo Selstead going to do in response? Oh, he's got two queens. Oh, well, he's found the perfect kind of hand to find against. Well, he's just decided to call it. He's setting a trap here. Unless he's really afraid that uh, Fraser has got a big hand. Well, there's a middle pin straight draw for Ian Fraser. A five would give him the straight. Well, this is interesting. Selstead playing this in about the opposite way to which Fraser would expect him to play a big hand because if he was setting a trap he would check the flop so Fraser doesn't believe Sells has got a big hand and uh, he hasn't got very much to call with though has he? Well he may be planning to bluff the turn or of course he could hit it and that's a bad card for Selstead. It is, it is because uh, if Selstead was afraid of a big hand then he's going to hate the king and by checking he has given Fraser the opportunity an opportunity I'm sure he's going to take. Yes, bets out. Of course, Fraser had no idea of the kind of hand Selset was playing. He probably thought Selset was playing a very small pair and betting out to try and find out where he was. And Selset, if he really believes that Fraser has got a big hand, he's going to be thinking about having to face another bet on the river. We heard Bo Selstedt in his interview say he played cautiously early on in tournaments. Look at this, passing two queens. Well, you've got to say that Fraser did outplay Selstedt there, but Selstedt got himself into a bit of bother by trying to set a trap. Very nice. That's one all now. Selstedt took a pot off Fraser earlier. Fraser's bluffed it back again. This sort of game is more about general life and how you are with one-on-one -on -one situations as to what cards you're playing. The first poker tournament I won, um, they said, oh man, how long have you been playing poker? I said, I fancy I've been playing poker all my life, but I've just only started using the cards. You know, and, and that's what these short-handed games are all about, seeing an opportunity and taking it. It's worth listening to what Ian Fraser's got to say on the subject of one tables. I mean, what an incredible set of results he's got in that format. It's like he came from nowhere. He never played on the live circuit and he appeared on TV like Russell Brand. Yes, he and Roy Brindley both made their names almost exclusively in this format. And here's a man trying to make a name for himself. He's the internet qualifier O'Shea, who's found a huge hand. Yeah, Tom O'Shea, hedge fund manager from Wimbledon. Never played on television before, but when you've got two kings, the hand kind of plays itself. On a scale of 1 to 10, the chances of you passing is about... Marinholtz, though, wanting to get busy with these suited connectors. 